Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the, this Quant Labs Trading Live Report. Tonight we've been running a test on this upcoming automated Forex trading strategy. So in this detailed video, I want to go over the testing. In summary, we've got about, I'm estimating about 75% win ratio on the entries. We don't care about the exits because the logic has not been implemented into this test. Also, no leverage is considered or we're only doing one unit test at a time for each position. And um, as I said, all we care about is the trading logic and what we're looking for are the calls on the forecasting of the uh, entries into the market if it's all for a short or a long majority of longs. You'll see what I mean in the video and let me know what you think and we shall talk to you later. Thanks for watching or listening. Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net for late uh, Thursday, November 23rd. We've been running uh, this automated trading strategy for a good couple of hours now. Um, somewhat successes, just wanted to fill you in on where things are at. Uh, just to make sure we understand things as the big caveat. The caveat is... Um, the strategy kind of only does entries, but I want to show you that the entries seem to be somewhat profitable. There's no trading logic yet for the exit. That's fairly uh, easy to do from my end. I just got to implement it. I just want to show you the calls for uh, the entries. So let me just show you. Uh, there's a generic uh, in Duke's copy, the, the um, reports. Now, these are all losses because obviously there's no exit logic and the broker will exit for me on my behalf. So a lot of them are losses. Now, if you were not part of my uh, event on the, um, when I talked about the um, strategy on Monday night, the current status, um, it's a lot more advanced now, more progress has been made. So let me just show you uh, some of the reports. So the overall portfolio obviously has, we had a, a ran first batch, which were nothing but red, and then I've tightened it up with a bad bug in it. The intraday report is quite interesting. Um, as I fixed up the bug, what started happening was there's a lot of activity on the Australian uh, US dollar and then it just a lot of activity on positions were being taken on. And then the next round after that was all of a sudden the Euro Australian parallel started uh, to take place. And then later on, Euro a British pound, then the Euro US dollar. Now, just as a highlight, I need to ensure that you understand that I have no control of subscribing to or listening to the euro US dollar because that's an automatic uh, a pair I have no control over that's an automatic um, subscribe and I literally cannot unsubscribe from it which is right here this X uh, I can unsubscribe from what's a good one to maybe or let's say the Norway the, the US dollar against the Norwegian Chrome. So you can see it's disappeared, so it means I'm not subscribed to it. But when you look at the uh, Euro US dollar, it says I can, uh, actually let me try it, it looks like I already did that. Uh, but on default, when you start up the uh, J4X, it, it, it defaults to that. Anyways, uh, back to the report. So there was some activity on the US, Euro US dollar, British pound against the Euro dollar. So I'm trying to uh, eliminate these more, um, these other currencies that are more the stable ones, unless they're part of the more volatile ones, the top most volatile for the last 24 hours. But as you may or may not have been tracking for the last couple of weeks, the same list of the top five have been pretty well uh, consistent. So there's been some activity on the U.S. Uh, Hungarian and the U.S. Japanese yen. I think 
personally that these these may I'm still testing these currencies the more stable ones on the US dollar and Japanese yen and the other one is as I've always said is the US dollar against the rand and that's South Africa and then also with the rand and the Japanese yen which are pretty well the most volatile so these are the overall positions that were taken on the overall P P and L. Always remember, I'm only buying one unit, nothing more. No, there's no leverage ap applied. Um, also, the commission fees are fairly low. Uh, if I can find it, I think they're like at two cents or whatnot. Let's see their position report if that shows. Yeah, right here, the commission in U.S. dollars is two cents. And then there's some at four cents. So we need to watch these um, commission fees uh, because those are what will eat your profits because the profits are fairly small without the leverage. Consolidated report. Uh, let's see what we got here. There's nothing much there. So the overall PL, obviously. Um, it, 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 like you can see the, the PL or the commission is quite high, not like comparatively. Um, fund transfers we don't care about, activity, log. So the, this is what the strategy is doing when it's connecting. Uh, merge log, the trade log is a very interesting log as well. Gives you the fill, if it was sold, on which side it was on, and the sell as well. So that's the general log for that. The strategy log, not sure why this is not being uh, recorded because I am using a strategy. So let's see the strategy. So the currencies that are supposed to be, um, uh, the currencies that are supposed to be subscribed to are, as I said, the, the rand against the yen, the dollar against the rand, the uh, US dollar against the Hungarian foreign, I guess. And uh, I believe the Euro and Australian dollar was the other one. Oh, actually, sorry, that was the US dollar and the Norwegian krone that uh, we had. So we had no positions put on in that currency on the dollar and Norwegian krone. But let's take a look at the important stuff, which is very, very important. Okay, so if we go into position report, I believe. Okay, so no, we want intraday report. Yeah, okay, so we had some activity on the Australian US dollar. So if we go into the, and then remember, I'm, I'm on a 10 second time frame here, so I may need to adjust that. So the US dollar, uh, US dollar, sorry, Australian US dollar. Now, the one thing we're looking for are entries. Remember, we don't have any. This is the blood, uh, with the bug that was discovered earlier tonight. Um, but uh, here, I don't know what direction this was on. This was a buy, a buy. Let me see if there's any other um, triggers here. Doesn't look like it. Oh, here we go. So you can see here we have a sell, which is a short. You can see the direction is correct. And you're going to see more of that. So this, for somehow this, this exit happened at the broker level, I have no idea. One of the interesting things was the strategy was shut down automatically because of, um, the strategy was automatically shut down because the queue was overloaded, ticks in queue bars, too many bars being collected, which I guess I have to throttle it down, um, which is a, a something I have to, because we're, we're doing this every 10 seconds, so it does get queued up, I guess. So I have to adjust that to maybe something like a minute or a five minutes, so it enables the uh, server to, or the, the strategy in JForex to keep up with the bars because I'm watching so many things. So there's that. Okay, so we've got the Australian US dollar. And as I said, we've got that call correct on a short or a sell, and it got the direction correct. We don't care about the exit because, as I said earlier, we're not tracking the um, 
that uh, direction. So that entry is correct. Our next uh, crossing pair that we're looking for is the euro, U, U, the euro against the Australian dollar. So euro, Australian dollar. Here we go. So this is this is the most recent. Let's just see. So that's the most recent. The chart is still active, and here it gets quite interesting. Here's a position buy, 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 buy. Let me show you that. Buy. Oh, that's a sell. Okay. And that's a buy. Okay. So are there any more? So we have about five or six uh, positions put on. So here we have a buy, which went and buy. It would have made a little bit of money, but it got that call correct. Here's a classic one. The buy on sort of a dip. Now remember, we're using three indicators, and they all have to um, be successful. So there's a buy there, and it went up. Again, we can't do anything about the call, so that's correct. Now the next one, again, uh, a buy, and it went up. But here you can see the pattern is that the um, direction is correct, so it's forecasting a buy. But the other thing you need to realize it's buying on the dip, and then a few seconds later it goes up. Okay, very important. Here's another one on the buy. You see that? Oh, that's a sell. So it did somewhat a short. I have to make sure that. But once I get the exit logic, we can confirm that. Did a buy, got the call right. This one was a sell, and it somewhat got it. It did get it correctly. That's pretty well it. So I'll assume. We did okay on that, where a lot of the, those positions, the right calls, were correct. And remember, we're using three indicators for that. And if you're part of the uh, webinar, you know exactly those um, those indicators. Now, here's the Euro British Pound. Let's see how that did. Okay, so we got the Euro British Pound. So we'll do some rewinding here. So here's the most up. To, okay, so here is that correct? Yes, so those are the positions. So let's see what we did here. We had a sell and it went down. That's what we want. We had a buy, went up a little bit, but our uh, indicators did line up. That's why it initialized the call. Here was a buy. Oh, we got that wrong. So that is one of the rare ones that's wrong. So we've got a little bit on the buy. Again, that one would have been choppy, but it would have, if we had the right call, it might have made a bit of money here at this point or even here. Okay, so let's see our next. We only got one incorrect on that one. So let's see our next one. So we have the Euro US dollar. So let's check that out. Dollar, where are you? Oh, we, we we got rid of that one. That's okay. Well, actually, we can still should be still be able to. I don't think we'll be able to see the history of it. We'll give it a whirl. U.S. U.S. dollar. Okay, so here is the most recent. Let's see if we have any positions coming up. Yes, no, we don't have anything. Oh, there we go. So we have uh, a buy, a eh, little bit. Another buy went up here. So what direction is this in? That's oh, a closed position. A buy, it did go up, and it did a sell. So uh, not a lot of money, but it did do the right calls. And again, um, when these indicators uh, line up. That's what we want to do. The the long or the the, the buy is the fine buy. Uh, Duca's copy. All right. So let's see the other currencies. British pound and the U.S. dollar. Okay. Okay. So let's see here. All the way over here. Are you? 
There we go. So what do we got here? Uh, closed position. Oh, that's all the blood, the bug. So we have a cell. It is going down. We have another cell going down. So that closed it there, which seems okay. Do a cell and another close here. Hmm. Okay, we it got the directions correct, I think, but nothing earth shattering there. And then we have the U.S. Hungarian. Let's see what we got here. U.S. Hungarian. This is a volatile one, but I bet you it just doesn't have the volume. Okay. Oh, we got two there. Uh, okay. So we have two positions here. So we have a closed, a buy, I guess it, and a buy. Hmm. That one's incorrect, but this one's sort of incorrect. Uh, continuing along, the US Japanese yen. Alrighty, so let's see what we have here. Okay, it doesn't look like we got anything recorded, even though there was supposed to be. I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so what else we got here? We have the US dollar and the Rand. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, that's a cell, so I guess it kind of got it right. And then another cell, nothing to brag about there. But these are probably a very light volume, which we've identified as not a lot there. What else we got here? And then we have the last one, which is the Rand against the Yen. Let's see, yep, that's the one. So here we are. You'll see it's fairly choppy, meaning it is fairly volatile, which is what we want. No, I can't find it unless this is one of them. A buy. Bring it up a little bit. Whoop de do. Nothing to brag about. All right, so that's the analysis. I would say a good chunk of these positions seem to get the right calls on the entries. Uh, I'll apply the exit logic and see what happens on that, and hopefully, get, instead of uh, losses, we'll get a positive PL. Hope this helps you out. Talk to you later. Well, there you go, another podcast video done ever want to get any of our daily analytics all you have to do is just visit us at quantlabs.net slash blog we'll look for at the bottom of the page and look for the yellow box click here and sign up get free daily analytics as well as two books for free first one is how to trade like a boss showing you 11 tips you need to know so that you are preventing yourself from allowing your broker screwing you over there's 11 tips for that also the second book which will show you different uh, automation techniques that you can use to enhance your automated trading one is excel and one is an open source project written in java also if you go under our website here at quantlabs.net anywhere you do get a product option here at the top have to do is choose any of these services that we've got a variety of courses one on infrastructure building blocks for python for a primitive algo trading system full in-depth course on interactive brokers the workshop for advanced programming languages like c++ java and python as well as a full on futures and options trading course built upon a uc davis course with all algorithms and source code provided in c++ and Python. And not only that, it gets even better. We have our analytics service, which is exactly for anybody not capable of programming or even wanting to program. You can 
definitely join our full analytics service where we give training signals and exactly what our system's doing as well as live tracking for all our trading and joining our weekly community events. There you go, and hopefully we'll see you on one of the other options and talk to you later on.